Today I'll be showing you how to use the multiplayer event system with the new input system to have different UI per player. So right here on the right side, I have the gamepad UI and you can see that I'm clicking the gamepad button and it's activating the UI. However, I cannot click this button with the gamepad. And with the keyboard and mouse, I can select this button, but I cannot select this button. The left side is the keyboard and mouse and I can move with the WASD keys. So this is great if you have a local multiplayer game and you want each player to have their own UI. And even if you don't have a split screen game, this will be useful in order to figure out how to do it without split screen, which I will tell you how to go about it. All right, so let's get started. So if you haven't seen this video previously, I suggest you do because I'm gonna be using the code from this video in order to make this video. However, if you already have it set up, then that's fine. As a recap, first, of course, we will need the new input system, so window package manager. Then under packages, unity registry, you just scroll down until you get to the input system right here. And I've just taken the liberty of installing the preview version. So for preview packages, go to advanced and make sure to enable preview packages here. And so I just installed 1.1.0 preview.3 and the install button will be there. And so the player manager here, this manages our players. So we have the player input manager component. So right here it joins whenever a button is pressed and we set it to our player prefab, which is a prefab with our player and our camera both inside of it. And our player has a player controller script and a player input script. And the player input script reads the input actions and calls the functions in the player controller script every time you press the button. So under events player, for example, I have the move and the jump. So whenever I press move or jump, it will call my player controller on move and my player controller on jump. And then my player controller script is just the one that I use in all of my videos, which is available on Unity's documentation, charactercontroller.move. I just copied that script and altered it. And then here it calls these functions on move and I'm just setting the movement input and jump here and replacing it down below. If you're interested in this, make sure to check out the other video. All right, so let's get started with adding UI. So in the prefab of your player, you're gonna want to have a canvas. So right click and add a UI canvas. And I'm just gonna make it right here under canvas scalar, put scale with screen size and put our reference resolution, which is 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution of normal games. And this is so that if we increase or decrease the size of the screen, it will scale the UI appropriately. And so now we want to add in an event system to register our clicks. So let's actually add a new game object here. Right click, create empty, event system. And then let's add in a multiplayer event system component. And this is the new input systems way of the event system for local multiplayer games. So you'll see here we have a player root which is the canvas that we are actually going to drag in there. So let's just drag in the canvas there. And so now it'll listen for events inside of this root. So this is the parent root and then anything inside of it, it will listen to events for. And then we need to actually have the actions for the UI. So like the on click, on pointer down, stuff like that. So we can just add default input modules. And since this uses the old input system, Let's replace it with the new one. And so what you can actually do is under the player game object, under player input, right here under the UI input module, we're gonna need to drag in our event system into there so the player input knows that they own this UI and to associate those actions with that UI, with the canvas UI. However, you'll see there is a warning here saying that we're using a different input action from our normal movement action. So you can see if I double click my player input actions, I have my own action here, which let's just ignore this right now, but I have my own move, look and jump action. However, in the event system one, you'll see that it has the default input actions, which this is the default one that comes with the package that you download, move, look and fire. And so it's using this one. And so here it says they should match if you want to synchronize the player input actions. So this actions to the UI input, which obviously we wanna do. And this button here, fix UI input module literally does nothing. You click it and then when you go to the event system, you'll see that it replaces it. And now it says none for all of these. And the only reason why I have options here is because in the sample I showed you 
in the beginning of the video, I actually copied the default input action to make my own so that I can put it here. But see, if for example, we were to have a player controls normally here, we wouldn't have these UI actions. So we need to combine our movement actions with our UI actions and put them in separate maps in order for this player input to work correctly. And so let's find that default input action and copy it. So if you go under packages here, then go to input system, input system, plugins, player input, and you'll see that we have these default input actions. However, Unity has made it read only, so we literally can't copy or change it. So we actually have to right click and show and explore. And so now here we can copy it however we like because they can't restrict us outside of Unity. So you can right click and copy the input actions and then go to whatever folder you're using for your project, which here is mine. And now I'm just gonna go to my scripts folder. I'm just gonna make a new folder here so I don't get confused. And then I can just paste here. So we go back to our assets, our scripts, and we find the one we just pasted. I'm just gonna rename it, player controls. If you click on it, now you'll have the UI here all set up for you. There might be an easier way to do this, to copy it, but I have not found a way yet. So if you do let me know. And so I just add in the actions here instead, and I'm gonna add in my jump action. That's the only one that's missing. So for the jump, I need my space. And we also need another action, which is the gamepad action, because one player is gonna be on the gamepad and the other one's gonna be on the keyboard. So I'm just gonna save this asset. Then under the player in the prefab, under player input, now we can just drag our actions into the player input actions here and we have to make sure to fix up our events because they got disconnected which mine didn't which is weird but if your events have been disconnected make sure to call the appropriate functions again by dragging in your player controller script and then going to player controller and calling the appropriate function which in my case is on move so whenever we move this event we'll call this function and we'll get our movement and so now we go into our event system let's drag in our new input action asset and you'll see that since it has the UI action map here and it has similar names to the actions it uses, it automatically maps it for us, which is very nice. So we don't have to look for it, it just does it for us. And so just to see what's going on, let's actually add a UI to the canvas. So right click UI and I'm just gonna add in a button. And if we see the button here, pretty small. So I'm just gonna make it bigger and I'm gonna increase the font size and the text to 100 and then scale it way down. And I'm going to make the button width bigger in order to see it better. So right here we have our text and just move around these rec transform values until you get it right. For example, mine is left negative 271. And then here I'm going to click this button here and pivot it to the center. Also change its position. So to pivot, we press shift and alt to set the position. Now it's in the center and I'm just going to make the button small again. Once again, I am bad at UI but that's to make the text look sharper. All right, and so if we go to our scene and we click play, now we have our button here. And if I press on my gamepad, we have the button. However, it's in the same location, which obviously we don't want. We want it to be each person has their own UI. And that's because if you go to player manager and then to your prefab under the canvas, it's because it's overlay right now. So it's overlaying the entire screen. However, if we want to put it specific to a camera, we can put screen space camera instead. And we pass in the camera, which is luckily is right here under our prefab. Let's drag in our camera there and I found that if I want it to be right in front of the player, plane distance one works. And if we click play now and press space and the other one, you see that now we have two buttons and now I can only click this one with the mouse and keyboard, which is the one I'm moving with. However, in the other one, the gamepad, I literally can't click it. And that's because it's currently not selected. So back to our prefab in our event system right here. If you want to have a button selected, as the first one, you'll need this for a gamepad. You can drag your button here, and when the game starts, this will already be selected. So once you press the A key on your gamepad, it'll press the button because it's selected. If you don't put this, Unity won't know which UI component to select because since you're using a gamepad, it doesn't know what the gamepad is hovering over because it doesn't hover, hover over anything unless you have a gamepad cursor that you made for your use case. So you can pass in the first selected button there so it'll be selected once the game starts. 
So if we press play, you'll see that now I can select it with the gamepad and that's because it's selected. However, I'm pressing the gamepad and I'm also selecting the other button, which we don't want that to happen. And I'm clicking it because if we go to our button, you see that we have navigation set to automatic. So once I click the gamepad arrow to the left, let's say, it'll be like, oh, there's a UI element there. Since it's automatic, I'm just gonna select it, even though it's not mine. So to counteract that, I'd personally set the navigation to explicit, which means that you are the one in charge of telling Unity what button you want to have selected depending on where you move. So if you select up, then ideally you'd want the button to be on top of your current button. And I have a video explaining how to do this if you're interested in learning more. Link is in the description. So since we only have one button, I'm just gonna set it to explicit or you can set it to none since I have nothing. And that will constrain it from going to the other canvas. So if we press play now, we have our button and we have our other one. You'll see that we can click it. We can click this, but we can't click this one. And now I can't click the other button on the other side. Awesome. But there's a small issue with the gamepad. And that's since we put this button as selected when we start the game, that basically limits the use of our A key on the gamepad or the button south. And usually you use that button to jump or you might be using that button for something else. So in that case, I'd recommend you either in the event system, do not have a first selected. And then for your gamepad, if you have like this cursor that you're using, you can hover over the UI and select it that way or you can put a certain button that you have to press in order to get to the UI, which is what a lot of games do. For example, the start button. Once you press the start button, then the UI pops up and then you can have control over the UI. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention is that what if you want one canvas or one UI for both players? So you want them to share the UI instead of both having their own UI. Well, in that case, in here, instead of making a canvas, for each player prefab, you would just make the canvas out here, UI canvas, you'd have your event system, which you'd actually remove the event system and create your own, right? Just as we did before with the multiplayer event system script, and you'd attach your canvas as well as add the default input modules, replace with the new one, then pass in the input action that we made. So it'd be very similar, except we'd be having one main canvas. And in this case, I'd suggest if you wanna split the canvas between the player, but have the same one, then I'd have multiple canvases under the main canvas. So you can just add as many canvases as you want. So you can have this as the player one canvas and then have a player two canvas here. And so once we do this, we would have our player being spawned by this player manager. And so then when the player is spawned, which you can get it from the player input manager under the events, so player joined event. So once a player has joined, you call this function to map the multiplayer event system to the player input component. So let's say that this object just got spawned right here with the player input component. And then in the script, you would just attach the multiplayer event system right here. And now here in this canvas, you design your UI. So let's see, we have this button here to the side and we only want it to appear on this side. So this is more setting stuff dynamically instead of having it set in the prefab. And so you can just disable this canvas while there's no player. And once the player is spawned into this game, then you can enable the canvas. And then we can just literally copy this and this would be for the second player. So now let's say we want the second player's button to be up here, you know, kind of asymmetrical. And now when the second player spawns in, so this one, we would attach this multiplayer event system to the UI input module. So this was just to give you an idea of how to do it, just in case you want to share a UI between the two players or you wanna make it more asymmetrical instead of having the same look. Or adversely, in your player prefab component, you can keep track of which player this is being spawned. So if this is the second or third player, and in this player prefab component, you can have multiple canvases. And depending on what player it is, you can enable and disable certain canvases, which is another option. And arguably, I think it'd be much neater than doing it this way. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it useful. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. Found out that 80% of people who watch these videos aren't subscribed, which is a big number. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. And of course, I'd like to thank all of my patrons. Thank you so much for all of your support. It's really appreciated. It really goes the extra way to help me make these videos. And so with that, I'd like to thank my new patrons. In the enthusiastic tier, we have 
Lurking Ninja, Steve B, Ryan, Brian, and Stefana. Thank you so much for all of your support. It's amazing and it's really appreciated. And if you're interested in joining, the link is in the description. I offer source code, early access, and an exclusive Discord channel. And if you haven't already joined the Discord channel, make sure to because you can chat, post memes, or ask questions. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time.